Hey everyone, this is a bonus Q&A episode. I try and uh, answer questions live every Thursday. Uh, You can sign up to come to my free live Q&A at schoolforthedogs.com slash Q and A and uh, you will see the next one I'm doing. I then am trying to take recordings of those Q&As and post them here to the podcast feed. If you have a question, you can email me directly, Annie at School for the Dogs. You can also go to anchor.fm slash dogs and record your question there. Thanks for being here. Hello, Annie here. Thanks for joining me. This is um, my first experiment with going live in our brand new app, which you can find by going to schoolforthedogs.com slash community or look up School for the Dogs community in iTunes. It's pretty great. I'm pretty excited about it. And um, this is one cool feature, is that I can do this in the app. Uh, If you're able to tune in, say hi. I'd love to see if this is working. Uh, You can also join these um, little Q&A sections uh, online at schoolforthedogs.com slash Q&A. And you can ask a question in advance at anniegrossman.com slash ask. Okay, today I have a question from um, my friend Sherry. Uh, I actually worked with Sherry on uh, Too Cute, the Animal Planet show. She was a producer there, and um, I was uh, I was an associate producer and a sort of the resident uh dog nerd, <laughs> animal trainer. It was it was a great job for me for about a year. I did it about 10 years ago. Anyway, um, Sherry writes, uh, a few months ago, we had to put our beloved 17-year-old dog to sleep, Lola. A few months later, when a friend of mine who runs a shelter got a litter of lab puppies, she invited me to come play with them. Not surprisingly, I came home with Jasper, a now four-month-old chocolate lab, already 50 pounds. Jasper is a big handful. We adore him, and we're doing our best at training him. But we have a crazy busy household with three young children, two cats, and two adults working very full-time jobs from home. To be honest, we're feeling really overwhelmed about training him properly. Would you recommend a board and train program to help give us a leg up? So I think Sherry is in um, a very understandable uh, um, position that I think probably a lot of people are finding themselves in right now. A lot of people have gotten puppies during the pandemic, um, which is, you know, a great thing for uh, a million reasons, but also, um, you know, I'm sure is posing a lot of challenges uh, that are somewhat unexpected, um, especially since, uh, you know, a lot of people um, probably didn't expect <laughs> that they would have to continue um, trying to work from home with kids and uh, maybe didn't factor in what it would mean to um, have a puppy in that equation as well. Uh, my response to Sherry is to Think twice, though, before jumping to um, doing a board and train. Um, 
I, I get the appeal of aborted train it as far as like what one imagines it might be, you know, I'm going to send my dog to some perfect person, perfect place. And my dog is going to come back uh, with all the work done for me. Uh, and everything is going to be easy. And uh, all that stands between me and this is, um, is money. Uh, however, I think that um, it very rarely works out that way. And the reason is environment is so important in dog training. And the environment that your dog is living in, uh, in this case, you know, in a home with two busy adults and two cats and three kids, would really need to be replicated um, incredibly closely, in my opinion, for a board and train to truly work. Because, you know, your dog may learn to be the perfect family dog when there's, you know, a fenced in, you know, three acre yard and no kids around and a dog trainer there working four or five hours a day to practice their recall and their leave it, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a good chance that all of that is not going to translate when your dog comes back to your New York City home. When we are asked to do board and trains at school for the dogs, what we usually do is suggest what we call day training, kind of like an intense day training program. Day training is where we go work with a dog when the owner uh, isn't home or sometimes they're home, but they're not. The idea is that they're not involved. Uh, and these sessions might be an hour. Um, but if somebody is really hoping to get the, the like dreamed of board and train effect, we will sometimes do as much as three or even five hour sessions with a dog uh, three times a week, four times a week, um, you know, even as much as five times a week in order to work on getting the desired behaviors in the environment where the dog is going to be behaving. Uh, second best to that, I think, is having a trainer stay in your home when you're away uh, in order to, at the very least, work on getting uh, behaviors down in the place where they are going to happen. And probably, you know, the the <laughs> the ultimate would be if you have an extra room in your house and you can find a trainer who actually wants to live with you and work with the dog, um, you know, I guess that would be the ultimate, but very few people uh, have, have that option. Um, although maybe it's a good reason for um, more people to become dog trainers is be, you'll get invited as house guests <laughs> um, more places. Actually, I I, uh, I know someone who works in the world of like luxury yachts and was saying there's so many people on luxury yachts who have dogs who are problematic and, and uh, that maybe I need to start like a dog training service where we take trainers and send them to go live on these luxury yachts with these people and train their dogs. Wouldn't that be fun? We just, we, I think we just, there need to be more dog trainers who <laughs> have the interest in um, going and uh, hanging out on, on yachts with dogs. Um, need to be more good dog trainers out there, period. Anyway, um, you know, another reason why I, um, I always hesitate to recommend board and trains is because um, it's hard to know what's really happening when you're not there. Uh, and you're, you're, uh, you know, tra training is happening all the time. So the trainer might send you some videos of some practice sessions, but what's happening during all the minutes when the camera isn't on. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not like, just saying this because I, you know, I have a negative attitude about these things or something like I know of situations. Um, actually, I specifically, um, uh, one comes to mind that I, that, um, uh, 
uh, Joni, who I interviewed on the podcast with her dog, Nelson, who is um, a very aggressive and potentially dangerous dog. She sent uh, him to a board and train um, and he came back um, damaged. He came back uh, with fears and anxieties he did not have before. And Joni got videos from the trainer throughout the stay. Um, and of course they showed Nelson, you know, at his best, but that, that uh, th those were just uh, moments, first of all, moments that were hard for then Joni to replicate in her home. Um, even though the, you know, it's not like there's a, a, a specific hand signal that the trainer can tell you to do and the dog's going to do it. You know, dogs are taking cues from all of their surroundings, not just from one particular command or whatever. Um, but also, you know, there, there was definitely stuff that was happening when he wasn't filming um, that ended up uh, really damaging the dog. And, you know, this doesn't just happen in board and trains. One reason why I tend to um, worry about dogs going to daycares is because there are a lot of daycares out there. I can think of uh, several offhand um, that are within walking distance from school for the dogs where uh, they really believe that dogs need to be dominated um, and uh, that it's all about, you know, controlling dogs with energy and maybe the occasional kick. And um, we've had more than one client who has uh, had a dog in daycare um, and the dog has developed fears. I'm thinking of one client in particular right now who uh, the dog had really severe separation anxiety and they ended up putting the dog in daycare because it was just like a stopgap measure that, you know, that they had to find a place to put the dog and the dog ended up developing a very specific fear, actually a fear of um, Hispanic men wearing hoodies. Um, and, uh, you know, our best guess is there was some kind of not good interaction with a Hispanic man wearing a hoodie at that daycare um, that, you know, I guess, you know, it becomes like, which is better, letting the dog suffer from separation anxiety at home alone or putting it in this daycare. Um, so that is my uh, long-winded answer <laughs> to Sherry's question. Should I send our dog to um, to do a board and train? My uh, The short version is um, probably not. <laughs> um if you are going to do it, um, in the New York area, there is Farfetch Acres um, uptown, I'm sorry, uh, upstate. They pick up dogs and, and bring them to their facility. They do training there. Um, I, I don't worry about what's going on there off camera. I think they're very good. Um, but again, it's not a New York City-like environment. I, uh, so um, I don't think... Uh, the the training is necessarily, you know, going to be a total panacea. There's also uh, instinct uh, training, which is located um, uptown. I think they also have a facility in New Jersey. Um, they're trained. They're owned by trainers who um, are also uh, Karen Pryor Academy graduates. Um, so I, th I think they're pretty good. Um, but again. Um, not as good as having the training done actually in your home uh, with with you being part of it. That's part of the day training that we do. When we do day training, um, the, the trainer every um, handful of sessions does like a transfer session with the um, with the owners, which is really important in order to make sure that they're keeping up with what the dog has been learning. Um, but my, my two big suggestions for Sherry, uh, one is my guess is Jasper probably needs more dog dog playtime than he's getting, um, ideally with other puppies. It really could just be one other puppy. I think one-on-one -on -one puppy playtime is, um, is the best kind of puppy playtime. Um, I think so many puppy, annoying puppy problems uh, go away when dogs simply um, get the chance to get their energy out 
with other puppies um, in ideally an enclosed environment, uh, supervised. My other suggestion, um, which might sound uh, a little nutsy, is um, to see if maybe there is another family in the neighborhood, you know, family, whatever that looks like, one person, a couple, a couple with kids, um, roommates, whatever, but see if there's like another household in the neighborhood that would be interested in kind of having like a dog share situation with you. Uh, I'm a big believer in opening up the idea of what it means to be a dog owner. Um, you know, a dog is not like a house that you have a mortgage on and you lock the door and nobody else should be there to enjoy your house. It's yours. Um, you know, you can be a dog's main caretaker, but a dog could have other caretakers too. And, um, you know, might have, um, might do better, uh, at least for some parts of the day when your home is particularly hectic with someone else who might enjoy having a puppy and would be glad to share the responsibility, share the expenses, share the, share the joy. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think we can, um, yeah, I, I just think, you know, we, we can help each other with puppies. Don't underestimate how much <laughs> the, the power of, of puppiness and how lovable, how lovable they are. And, um, and it just might give you the kind of break, might give Sherry the kind of break she and her family need so that when it is their time with the puppy, whatever that is, whatever kind of schedule you work out, they're refreshed and able to focus on the dog. Um, I guess my last piece of advice is I know Sherry has three kids. They're pretty little. But whenever possible, I think it's a good idea to get the kids involved in training. Kids don't come at training with all the baggage that we do. And I think kids can have a lot of fun with training um, if they're able to, um, if they're able to do it um, in a way that's fun and makes sense and that works. And um, I, I hope that, um, you know, I hope that the, the training that we help people do, um, be it in classes or private training, um, is would be kid friendly um, because I think um, I think kids can get get really into it and why not why not outsource <laughs> why not outsource the work and of course um, I mean I think Sherry's probably already doing this but food toys as much as possible work to eat toys make sure Jasper is spending as much of his time and energy as as you can arrange on his meals. Um, in toys, you can freeze it in toys, puzzle toys, you know, any, any kind of work to eat toy. Um, but you know, energy is finite and as much of, um, of it that we can have him eat up, um, getting his, uh, getting it out while using toys. Um, I think the better, uh, hope this was helpful. Thanks to those of you joining me in the app for this experiment. We will try it again next week. Thank you for being here.